We have a slew of data coming from China today and on Friday. Joining us from Singapore is Hao Zhou, Senior Economist at Commerce Mac, to help us make sense of it all and to find out what we can expect. Hello, good morning. Now, we are expecting export data from China today. You actually pegged that at 10%, which is also the same as your forecast. So is this a sign of things starting to pick up? Uh, well, I think, you know, the most important thing is not the recovery of the exports for China. I think, you know, I put 10% because of the last year's base effect. Uh, last year, last May, the China's exports declined a lot. So uh, considering the, uh, the basic effect, I put 10%. But still, I think the global trade growth is, is still under very good, uh, great pressure to slow down going forward. Well, it is the first time that it's going to be in positive territory since June of last year. And as you mentioned, it's really coming off a slow base. So are we going to be seeing more, more problems moving forward in terms of China's exports? Well, I think, you know, from the export point, export point of view, uh, the most important thing is not China. I think the problem is that, as you mentioned earlier, you know, the global economic slowdown is still there. And uh, the trade growth, as, uh, as mentioned by WTO, also we are going to have another year of very, very slow export growth this year. So it's a global problem. It's not China's at all. Now, we also have for imports data. You're predicting a negative 12%. So we will expect trade balance for China to continue to fall after an almost a big fall from, from last month. Well, I, I think, you know, uh, for imports, right, you know, the, the thing is that, you know, the commodity prices uh, still decline by more than 20% on a year-on-year -year basis. So uh, the import value actually is still dragged down by the pricing effect. So the from volume basis, actually the import still looks okay, relatively generally weak, but still okay. So uh, for trade balance, you know, China always have very strong uh, trade balance uh, in the past two years. Uh, the thing is that, you know, while China has a strong uh, trade balance, but still China have very another on the other hand, China also have very strong capped outflows. So that is something I have to think about. Uh, which means that China have uh, some kind of current account surplus, but have uh, even bigger cap capital account deficit. Now, it's very interesting that the World Bank downgrading world growth, but it actually up China's growth to 6.5%. And we're coming out with China's first quarter GDP. And your estimate is at 6.8%, which is at its lowest since um, maybe 2009. Well, yes, you know, uh, 6.8, which I put there, is still a little bit higher than market expectation, but still the lowest growth since the global financial crisis. I think, you know, uh, the thing is that, you know, the growth is still under pressure, uh, but there is some kind of short-term uh, uh, positive signals from China recently, so that's why I put 6.8 there. Uh, I think, you know, the, the reasons is because the first... Uh, the China's uh, property market looks quite you know, solid in the past few quarters and also looks like there is a little bit restocking in China's uh, uh, manufacturing sector, especially you know, the commodity prices uh, are picking up. I think this is a reflection of this kind of uh, restocking process. And third, you know, because of the PMI data, which were released early this month, looks quite solid. So uh, overall, I still think that uh, the growth is still under pressure, but uh, in the first quarter, we are going to have a little bit, you know, uh, better than expected uh, GDP figure from China. So a little positive note there, and also within the government's target of 6.5% to 7%. Thank you very much for joining us live from Singapore.